All right, we're back again from Monster Palooza, and we couldn't really do this at Trans World because it was just too busy. But we're here at Monster Palooza with the show today, first day of the show being over, and we're here with George from Immortal Mass. Yes. And George, I like. There's like a lot of questions I want to ask you, and there's a lot of people in the haunt industry that really like when I do these behind the scenes of the uh, the haunts because you know it's like somebody who actually is asking you know like sure. smart questions about like things that they would want to ask, and uh, so I just want to ask you some questions and talk to you and get a tour of all your masks. We came at a good time. We just cleared out everybody so we could actually see everything without people yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, I know nobody's here. Yeah. But George, like. Like, you weren't at the haunted house industry like when I was, okay? When there was like no mask companies at all, okay? And then you had like Don Post and stuff like that. And then, I was a fan though, I was still, huh? I was still a fan. You were a fan, but yeah. somebody came along and like did silicone masks, like I can't remember what company it was, it was kind of... SP, SPFX. Yeah, that's right, SPFX, but I think there was another one as well. And then of course CFX right. came along, and then you just kind of like came out of nowhere like a bat out of hell, okay? okay. And so when the silicone masks kind of hit the scene, it was like, oh, we we have like five of them, we have like 10 of them. Now when you come to Transworld, you've got like, it seems like a gazillion, yeah, almost okay? Almost yeah. and, and you have just like literally, like a, a like Godzilla stomping all over Tokyo, right? And I'm not saying the other uh, mass companies aren't great because they're all great, yeah, yeah. but you just have so many, we okay? We like to make masks. We so make how masks. in the world did this get started for you guys? Started in the garage. Started in the garage. Yeah, started in the garage with a, a, an idea. Uh, while Andrew and I were both working at um, another effects company, that's where we met. Um, and I remember when he said, I'm going to try making these silicone masks. And I, at, at that time, when we were working there, I already had bought one from Rusty from SPFX, so I, I knew what he was talking about. I liked them, but I was like, I don't really know a whole lot about this. And then uh, he started the company first. Uh, I, was in, I, was just, I was his supervisor at another company. and. Um, uh, he dissolved his partnership with his first partner, uh, and then conveniently we both quit our other job, and I became available. And so he gave me a call to come take a look at his company. That was kind of basically it. And so I did, and I saw potential in, 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 um, in what I thought he was going to be able to do, and I thought that I could probably help. And so, uh, I, first I came as an employee, then about three months later, uh, I bought in and bought you know, half the company. In with them and, so and where was the first place you decided to try to start selling these? Was it at Transworld? Uh, yeah, convention. Small ship blues and Transworld. Um, because I, when I first came to Andrew, I'm like, I even asked him, I'm like, so how are you selling these things? Like, you have one phone line and it's just, if somebody happens to answer, there was no website, anything yet. So it was conventions and a one line phone. And just so we're on the same page, Andrew is your partner, yes, Andrew, and yeah. he won the last season of Face Off. Yes, yeah, yeah. Season like 12. kind of going away. It was almost unfair <laughs> because it was so uh, it was lopsided. He's a good, he's, he's a good artist. He's yeah, fast. He, he's, yeah, he's perfect for that show. Yeah, and so uh, and he won Face Off, yeah. and he's your partner, and you guys uh, do amazing work. But how many artists do you have to well, do all this? So. Um, with, with our all of our in-house people and all of our subs, um, there's about 40 on payroll. 40 on payroll. Yeah, yeah. At, at any given time. That's inclusive of all the sculptors we have. Right and then at your physical shop, which by the way, we're gonna come by and see how to make a silicone mask. Yeah. Because you already said we're gonna be, we're gonna let us go there and get the whole tour and see how it's done. But um, but like, how many people does it take to make these uh, so orders? Uh, there's 32 employees, including admin right now, in the, in the shop. Um, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight divisions. So it's a, it'll, the mask could potentially pass through all those, all those divisions. 32 people are working there. And this started in your garage. Started in Andrew's garage, yeah. And, and the idea was to go and sell them to haunted houses. Yeah. That was your whole plan. They but, were the, the, but first, then, the first people to embrace us, because we, we, we did is we basically at the time left the film effects industry. Um, and, and, and you know, we're seeing a writer strike right now in, in Hollywood to so kind of slow down. This actually happened again uh, in 2008. And that's when basically the idea for Immortal was born. It was more along the lines that we know we can make cool stuff. Why are we marketing it only to this type of industry when they're not necessarily buying? So what if we just made cool things and market to anybody who wanted it? And the first people that embraced this was the haunted attraction industry. Be because of what we were making, we made kind of a, a quicker 
um, solution to a complex makeup application. That's what these have masks you, are. Have you talked to other people who do effects in the effects movie industry mm -hmm. that came to you maybe for some advice? Like, should I get in the haunted house? Uh, should I start selling stuff to haunted houses? Have you heard anybody talk I about, mean, I'm not talking about masks, but like I props, think, animations. I think, art, I think effects artists have definitely realized that they can freelance outside of the Hollywood. Um, and, and again, um, turning that towards things like the haunted attraction industry has been lucrative for them. So I've seen it happen a lot more often over the course of the years. I think it was funny, you said you bring that up. I think, I think maybe 15 years ago, Hollywood effects artists would have turned their nose up a little bit at, at, at Halloween. You know, it's weird because we all came from that though. Like we, like, we all grew up as the kids that loved horror movies and Halloween and dressing up and making masks. But then they thought, oh, well, I'm doing it for film, so it got me serious now. Yeah. So this company that you started in your garage, mm -hmm. and you kind of primarily thought, we're gonna sell masks to haunted houses. Now it's like you're doing a lot of Hollywood stuff. Right, so it came back full circle. Like, yeah. Like, um, so when we started off doing... What percentage is haunted houses to film? Um, I still think that our bread and butter is probably Halloween in general. So so haunted houses... And collectors? The, yeah, collectors, and anyone who wants a really cool costume when it's come to Halloween. I How did know. you build up your social media? Because I think that's like one of your primary marketing tools. Um, uh, well, like, because you, you I mean, like you went from nothing and now right. you've got this huge following on I social mean, media. I knew early that Facebook, Facebook was the, the, the way to start with, you know, and really, I, I mean, I, it's like, it was a personal pride thing. I actually was really proud of building up our Facebook page. And, um, and then the, the early days of what was called viral media was happening. So like we, we were lucky enough to like, like have that happen to us when viral media was just starting. Like I think like Unilad and LED Bible and so that were doing things. And we were- we well, What was the secret sauce to get it? Like for, an, for example, on Instagram. Well, Instagram was, the, 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 was formulaic. Like so, so Instagram was like, I knew what I wanted my page overall to look like. I knew that I wanted to fill it with the same look all the way through so that when you kept scrolling, you would always see nothing but new masks, new designs, and we'd go, wow, I can't believe there's so many. And I wouldn't interrupt it with like flyers and like and, and text and and it was just the same thing over and over again. That became like how I did it. And I just kept doing it over and over again repetitively. Which uh, social media, like if you had to dump them all but one, which one would you keep? Which one do you think is the most powerful tool for you to sell masks? I think, I think, um, I think for staying power, Instagram. Instagram? Yeah, although TikToks get, you know, obviously caught on. It just works differently in, in a, than, than what I can do with Instagram. Instagram is great because it's like an extra free website. When you go to uh, Transworld, do you look at the other silicone mask companies? Um, I look at the ones that are my friends because I don't feel weird being in their booth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure they feel maybe a little threatened. <laughs> I mean, we're honored. We're honored well, that you're over there. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm. I think I'm friends with like 90. percent What do you? Silicone. What was the coolest silicone mask you saw at Transworld that you did not do? That you go, man. I wish we would have done that. It's not so much a wish that uh, that. I would have done that. It's like I'm glad that I didn't. Like I loved um, Basement Effects uh, and, um, and Savage Silicone's um, hamburger. Hamburger. Yeah. I don't imagine us <laughs> ever making a hamburger, so I'm glad they did it. It's kind of like that. It's like, it's like I'm glad somebody did it. If anybody was you, because it's like the same way back. I, I see that with other things too. I'm like that was really cool. I, I don't. I don't think I would have done that. So I'm glad that you did. You know. Yeah. The hamburger is outrageous. Yeah. Yeah. Now a, a mask that you did that I thought yeah. was uh, like stupid crazy oh. was that. Uh, the you know like the uh day of the dead uh you know the what's that called the hispanic oh the one we did um that we did uh based off of um uh what's it called the the disney yeah yeah uh, it's not is it in Can no not in Canto. uh coco yeah coco yeah yeah, yeah. that was crazy yeah yeah, it's, it's fun every once in a while to see one of our masks and like and then envision it as you know like what if we did just a little bit of tweak like this and it looked like you know, like something else. That was a fun way to do. How, how many uh, masks are you doing? Like, how often do you have a new mask coming out? Oh God. Uh, uh, like every week. Every uh, week, you yeah, have a new one. Yeah. There's, there's currently, uh, there's currently, I think seven or eight sculptures being worked on right now. 
Like, and then how many do you have currently for sale? Like how many are there? A hundred, 200, 500? Oh, catalog, no, there's, there's almost 500 different, different designs in my catalog now. Probably, I think there's actually more because of the faces now that we're doing. So here's another question I want to ask you, because me and you have had this conversation yeah. many times about actors, like say, not wanting to wear a silicone mask because it's too hot or whatever. Now, uh, what have you learned about from the haunted house community who would come to you and tell you could you change this could you alter that yeah, it, have you learned stuff sure, from, from sure. your customers and, like, like, the goal is always to be able to make to, like, to, to take that in and see what we can do and, and then there's always gonna be limitations because there's something so what have you changed like what have you done well, different well, so we, based on suggestions so, so um first was the half mass i wanted to end mid neck there's a certain amount of little bit of relief that was one of the first things we did and Believe it or not, we actually made that, the first half mask that we made that was Kaepernick was for a promo for a director friend of mine who wanted to do it for a horror movie. And he asked me if I could make my pumpkin mask but cut the neck off, and so we did. I'm like, hey, these kind of work. So then it kind of led us to the first sculpted half mask that we did. And then those were our thing for a while. And people found them comfortable. Then, like you said, there was still warmer climate. So then we exper started experimenting with the face silicone mask, where it's just stra a strap face silicone mask. And I'm not gonna say we're the first to do it. Other people tried it first, but we saw things that we liked about what they were doing and things that we didn't like what they were doing. And we kind of, I wanna say simplified some of them and then went, where are the drawbacks and what can we make better? And, and I think what we, we did is we found a nice... Do you get a lot of suggestions from Haunt House owners? Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, we do. I know me and you have talked yeah. a lot. You know, one of the, like a suggestion I would have is like on the hands mm -hmm. to not make them go up so high. Well, and, uh, so, so they're easier so, to get on. So we are, we are and, and thank you for the suggestion. So we're actually about to start a new series of, of arms and, and hands. So some are going to be just hands and some are going to be like a little bit longer, but they're going to end in some like an, like an armor. Um, and they're going to be they're going to work really well because you don't have to worry about blending them off and everything like that. Is there ever a point where like you guys sit around and go, you know what, we've sculpted every possible monster there could be until you saw that hamburger, right? Right. <laughs> right? But like uh, maybe we need to go in another direction, like we need to make like more, uh, you know, applications for arms, chests. We saw, I, I, costumes, we, you started doing we, costumes. We started costumes, yeah, um, and we learned a lot about that. We're, We'll continue that line. Um, the way we do it is kind of like bringing out a fashion line though. So it's, it's like you bring in um, designers, then you have pattern makers, and then you have to find manufacturers. And so it's not, as, it's not like we're stitching one by one at home. It's like you gotta feed people to bring a line out. And so um, we're working on a kind of a series of new designs for that. Yeah, um, so like, what do you think, like, uh, say, what do you think Immortal Mass will look like, say, three years from now, four uh -huh. years from now? Um, will there be, like, things other than masks? Sure, yeah, there will be, for sure. Like, you, you're, you're like, we, thinking... We, we always have talks about other things, and we always come back to them, and eventually we get, we get to a point where we make them. So, so we're working on an animatronic mask right now. Uh, we're talking about some full body stuff. Um, now, you know, a lot of people take your masks and use them for animatronics. Sure. Is that something like uh, that are, is very easy to do? Um, it'd be better if they were sculpted specifically for the animatronic, but it's cool that they're able to get them to work. So, yeah. Have you guys thought at all about like, say, I want to get into the prop business or yeah. making animatronics yeah. or things of that? You talk about it? Oh, yeah. So that's a possibility down the road, yeah? yeah. So, uh, so tell me, George, mm -hmm if we could take a look at some of your masks. Sure. But before we do, let me ask you, what, what is the most like popular type of mask that haunted houses buy? And I mean like, you know, is it scarecrows, is so, it zombies, so we, so we clowns? See, like, we notice this now, we see trends. Like, 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 and it's funny, I don't even know if like, there's points or times where we're like, are they talking to each other? Is this on purpose? Like uh, in the last year and a half, aquatic, we've seen like a lot of fish things or fish leaves or things like that. I'm like, is this a thing right now? We don't really know if that's what's happening, but we see these trends where like people start going for that, you know, or animal hybrids. We'll see a lot of that one time. Um, or classic monsters. So they're going for a lot of like Franks and, and, and vampires and like that, that scene. So I'm not sure if collectively the industry is all kind of thinking the same thing, you know? We see trends like that no matter what, but definitely we see that in, in, what, in what we're selling too. Hey, what, how does it make you feel? This is like so off the topic. Uh, when you hear about some criminal uh -huh. who robs a bank uh -huh. and he's wearing a silicone mask to completely hide his identity. I think, have you had any of that? Like where you know, people like, have bought your masks? Um, 
yeah, so we haven't had like a robbery in our mass. But, like, like, I think late, like we had some like at most, like we, we finally did get a phone call and we're like, we, we always work with the police whenever we get a call, but I think it had more to do with a fraud thing than it did with that. Mm. Because your masks are so realistic yeah. and you make a whole line where it, it literally can make you old yes. or young yes. and we won't go into details, but we know like people have bought your masks yes. in the past to hide their identity yes. so they could like blend in with society. And so like, you know, obviously people could buy them for, you know, bank robberies. We've seen all the bank robbing we movies. Could. I, I look at it this way. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but sooner or later there's going to be a paper trail back. to Yeah, us. So exactly. Like, like, you know, uh, dumb. Uh, they'd have to get somebody right. else to buy it. Right. for them but like what is like getting back to the one question what is the most popular type like i know you have trends right. but like overall like oh even if this one's not the most popular this year it's always popular like what are people buying the most aliens aliens yeah really yeah Dude, you gotta see this alligator yeah. mask over there <laughs> an alligator mask <laughs> it's yeah, we, wild yeah, we're, we're the gator. so yeah. so george let me ask you this sure. question your two main shows are this one sure and you don't go to mhc no, but I go to Transworld. Okay, so Transworld in this show. Uh -huh. And so is there any comparison whatsoever between Monster Palooza and Transworld? They're very different from each other, but I like that. Um, Transworld is a trade show. So it's, it's, it's like you, you, you should be doing business there. That's, that's what it's geared for. And you can tell there's a pace that comes along with that. It's like a work hard, play hard environment. So like, like Transworld's a whole experience and an event, but it's, it's the big show, you know? You're one of the biggest vendors there, uh, especially probably with uh, revenue, like writing orders and whatnot. Um, you know, people are always saying, you know, move the show, go to another city, yeah. do this, do that. How, what is your, in your opinion, do you Stay like? right where it is. You like it right where it is? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think again, it, it's a trade show, so it's, a, it's about doing business. It is cool to get to see friends and f friendly faces, but ultimately that's what a trade show is. So I think single location that people are familiar with, having it in the same place over and over again makes it actually a good thing. Plus, I mean, like, everyone's like, oh, we should go to Vegas. I mean, from vendor standpoint, like, uh, you know, yeah, I think Vegas would be just as fun as anybody else, but I don't really want you spending your money in a casino. I'd rather you spending your money with us. That's what we came to do. Right? Or the other vendors. Right, exactly. So, yeah, so, you know, uh, I tell people, George, and like, I've said this like a hundred times, I even did a video on it. Mm -hmm is that you know people complain about oh we want to see different haunts we want to do this we want to do that a train show is not about haunt tours it's no. about putting vendors and buyers together to see new product right. and that's what makes to be a haunt tour is just a bonus right. yeah because i always say like mhc yeah. if you said we're going to have mhc this year but there will be no haunt tours right. there will be no customers right. nobody will go right, right? but transworld if you say the darkness is an opening because right. it didn't right. for three years right. straight right. Right. No one's going to care because they're coming to see all the new immortal masks or yeah, see distortions sure, or and, scare and, and factory. Those are all great. And I'm glad that you do, do it when you do it. It's, all, it's awesome to have the extra things to do. Technically, what we should all be there for is, uh, is it's, it should be all industry related. You know, so the seminars are really important. Um, it's great to have the social gatherings. I think it's a great thing to get to know each other. But ultimately, we're there to like t to get everything set for the season. I'm there to uh, to to show everybody what I got, to remind you that I'm still making more things, to ask what you guys are doing so I can see like within the next couple of months are there things that I can actually be sculpting that will fit those things that you're doing. Um, and it's all generated around the specific industry. And what do you think about uh, the fact that the show has like literally been dominated now by mask companies and costume companies? Do you think that's a good thing? I mean, it's, it's good that people like, are, are paying attention to the character aspect of it. I, I think that's an important thing, no matter what, because it's it's like we we're, we can't really automate these things. So it's all, there's 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 a great part that's always going to be actor driven and character driven. And, you know, and I can so. tell you when the first show happened, I don't remember there being any costume companies or any mask companies. Right. It was all props and animations. Right, right. And now it's like a lot of character driven. Yeah type yeah. stuff so hey show us like your uh, your Sorry. booth yeah. and i can't wait to actually come back and see your shop but these are examples and tell us like what the differences are so for these, these are our, our, our newest line and these are the immortal faces and this is our strapped silicone mask so they work just like any one of our masks but they're sculpted on a little bit of a different form and they're meant to fit around 
and these high torque straps hold everything back, don't sag, keep everything close to the face, and then your face will operate the mask just like, just like our regular mask do. And but, is this one the same way? It just has yeah, have a hair? Yeah, it has a wig. Wig just comes right off. Straps come off that. So they come with optional wigs or hoods, or you can costume any way you want to. And then you have, um, are, so these are with straps mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Okay. Everything over here is our faces, so these are all strap masks. And, and it's a new line, so we're developing them, but um, they're kind of like... We, Was uh, it really popular at Transworld? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we sold a lot. Hmm. Yeah. And so these here... you're talking about, so when you're saying like, I got a lot of actors and they get hot wearing masks, but I, have, I, I need a bunch of them running around. Well, I'm like, okay, these are great. These are, these are for those ones. And, and you know what? I'll tell you something, and I'm just going to say it because it's totally true. Yeah. You know, these days, uh, to do... Um, if people want to know the, the secret sauce, everybody's always asked, what's the secret sauce? You know, I want to know what your secret sauce is on Instagram. But, <laughs> but you know, the secret sauce really to getting more attendance and whatnot is to have good, uh, you know, digital media content. And when you buy your mask, like the nothing's better than to like film these characters and, and in your haunted house. And, and so it's the same way, like, like we, I won't even release a mask yet until we got a chance to shoot the movement video. Like I, I'll, I'll sit on it until I get my actor in, like that, and then we we, we costume the, the character as, as the best we can, or whatever, you know, because I want to present to the public what I think is an idealized version of what the mask is. I don't want to just throw another guy with a t-shirt. I want to show you. You guys can dress these things up. This is for you to have fun with. Um, so yeah, so so so. Do you get a general, kick out of seeing yeah. haunted house commercials and saying, "Oh, there's my mask"? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 trippy to see our stuff. I mean, it's it's neat to see our stuff appreciated all the way around. And and they're great for growing TikTok and yeah. Instagram, yeah. making little quick five second you know clips with these that monsters. Means that, that means we're doing something right. They're enjoying them. That's what I mean, we're hoping to do. You know, like. like it's, it's weird because you want to see people wearing it. And you know, I'll tell you, all the silicone companies are great. All the mask companies are great. They all have cool stuff. And they really do help you grow your social media. Yeah, yeah. Um, because it makes you look more like Hollywood. Right, right. You, if you're not good at makeup, see, in St. Louis, right. we have no film industry, right. like Atlanta, where you well, can snatch a I bunch of a, makeup the, guys. That was the thing when we were starting. We, we knew that. Like, like, we wanted to give people the level of... Um, of makeup excellence that we were doing in in, in LA, uh, but we know that that, that it, like most you know not everyone's going to have like a giant makeup team like they do here. So these became a really viable option. It's like, well, what if we could just make it all in one thing and just threw it over in ten seconds? Exactly. Yeah. Now let me ask you one more question. Yeah. Let's just go in hog wild into your mask. Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Okay. Yeah. This literally, you've seen this commercial or this uh, trailer, right? For yeah. the Winnie the, the Pooh. Movie already came it came out. out. Yeah. Did the movie already yeah. come out? How did it do? Um, it did well. I mean, they made the movie like, they, they said. How they, did that come about? Was that a mask you already had? Yeah. They called they bought, you and they wrote they a movie they about, it. about it? They just bought it on my website. Like, the, uh, so uh, honest to <laughs> God, the truth, I had no clue that, like, like later I did. So, so there are a couple of filmmakers from England. Um, uh, they had been actually buying masks for years and using them in their movies. And I was aware of their movies. I just didn't know they were the same guys that did this movie. Um, funny story. Uh, we were working with Disney and some stuff at the time. I, I, uh, they were coming to the shop and we were having some meetings with some people from Disney. And uh, I wake up in the morning and I see like one of the, the uh, horror mags, like Fangor, or Dread Central, or that had this thing about this movie called Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. I'm like. I look, I'm like, oh wow, that's our mask. You know, so I called my partner, Andrew, I said, oh, check this out. I sent him the, the link. By the end of the day, Variety was running it, people were running it, and I'm like, oh man, I hope this doesn't mess up our things with Disney. Because we, we made this mask to be just like a cartoon bear. I guess that was just like the, the thing. We didn't even think about painting it yellow into like the third casting. It was meant to be more like, like a Yogi Bear, probably. It was the brown one was the first one. So we painted one yellow, they bought it, and we didn't realize that the whole thing that was going on was that Winnie the Pooh became public domain. So this Disney property now is public domain and they're, the first thing that was coming out was a slasher <laughs> movie. Um, of Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, yeah. But let me ask you a question. Yeah. See, because Winnie the Pooh is public domain, just like Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. but Warner Brothers owns the likeness of those characters, sure. okay? You did these masks, so right. can they make this movie without your permission? Because isn't it your intellectual property well, so, at this point? So, right. So, so no. So, yes. Um, we allow for the use of our mask in media. And we allow for the use of our mask in the promotion of said media. Anything past that requires a, a license 
uh, from us. So uh, did they get a license from you I'm, to do? I'm in like um, 19 different licenses right now with, regarding that mask. Really? Yeah. And especially like, oh yeah, because that movie like took off in a weird way. But of course, it's kind of like the Scream mask, right? It's like the, 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 the ghost face mask. Um, that mask existed before Scream did, so they have this like joint licensing deal with the, with the mask. It kind of works the same way. In other words, anything that there that has blood and honey that has a, the image of the mask, they have to go into a licensing deal with us, us as well. So I'm in like, I'm in like. But so for haunted houses, when they make like content using your mask, yeah. you're allowing that. Yes. Okay. All right, but I think it was a good question yeah, of because that thing blew up yeah. and everybody went crazy. A killer Winnie the Pooh, yep. you know, did they actually have, I didn't see the movie. Did they have a Tigger and they had, um, uh, and did you do those masks? Did Piglet and we did the, that mask. You did Piglet yeah. as well? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah that just kind of ex was they're, crazy. They're working on another one. They're working on another one. Okay. And so here's your line of why we were talking about. Yeah, so we brought, we brought some of the humans to, uh, to the show. Usually I, I don't, cause I'm always like, oh, monsters and stuff. But I thought it was kind of fun to bring some of the humans this time. So and then you them. have um, scarecrows. Yeah, they light up. And, light up and deformed characters. Guys, yeah. um, what is like the most popular mask that you sold off your website? Like we've sold the most of this uh, all time. I mean, some of so it's licensed stuff like Art the Clown from from Terrifier. I have license on that. That sells really well. Uh, aliens sell really well. The zombies will always sell well. So the, the Last of Us stuff right now, that the the Porter Step, uh, style zombies are doing really well. And by the way, that's a good question because you know, like CFX has done a lot of licensing deals. Yeah. Okay, and you're doing licensing as well. What license masks do you have for collectors? Um, Court of the Dead, um, which is sideshow collectibles. I have Art the Clown. One. We did. We were in a licensing deal on on, uh, on Freddy Krueger. I have a couple other like, they're every licensing deal is different from each other. Uh, so I have a couple other ones that are that are brewing. But yeah. And one of the things too is like when people buy your mask online, they can choose like different colors, or if they want hair, or they don't want hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, we can do custom sculptures and we can do like custom cut work and custom hair work. Did uh, the new mo the Spider-Man movie contact you to see if maybe you would do a <laughs> rhino for them? <laughs> yeah, we did that one a long time. I think sometimes we get these things where like, let's just see if we can do it. And is this the Winnie the Pooh? No, this is no? a new one. This, this is, is like a new more, version? Uh, this is more of a regular bear. We're, we're still planning on hairing this one, but we haven't done it yet. This so is the, This is the cordyceps zombie that's just a, a mushroom zombie. Yeah, I saw that. And then you talked a lot about the fish. Mm -hmm. they're, they're and there's some fish yeah. there. You need and to buy this one. Aliens that and these are there. new. Yeah, these are brand new. So how does this work exactly? Yeah, where do you see? Right there. Your eyes are right there. This where? is a big cheek. cheek. So see the hole right there? Oh, yeah, yeah. The guy was right there. Your mouth is right here, and you operate the mask. Right here. See, the only person mouth. that would wear that mask would be me. <laughs> and how in the world I is wear. all these, like, veins and everything like painted painters. on there? So how many painters do you have? Uh, eight. And look at these bulldogs. You got like a whole line of animals. You got uh, apes, uh, bulldogs, and then I'm, what are these technically called right those are, here? Those are like a ghost character we did. A yeah. ghost character? Yeah, yeah, we wanted to see, like, it was like this um, fabric statue that it was based off of. And yeah, we made, made like a ghost character. Yeah, look at the alligator. And then of course, you got a lot of really cool skeletons. Mm -hmm. Look at the alligator. Yeah, he's cool. You know, when I think of him, I think of my one of my favorite things as a kid. I was never a Star Trek fan, but I always liked that oh, one born, episode yeah. of born, yeah, yeah, born where it's like a, it's a, it's a classic reptile. Character. She get this one too. This is like an Aztec -y looking. Yeah, one. that was fun. Sometimes we just get like we do um, we just get abstract and. Uh, that was called the deity, but yeah, totally based like that. And then you got these like the luchagor, luchagor wrestlers. Yeah, we really wanted like to, to capture like uh, the materials they use, and so it was like a lot of cool stuff that we did with like with flake that goes into it in silicone, which is pretty neat. This one's really cool. It has like a lot of holographic flake inside of it, so you can see like a changing kind of color. I noticed too, like lately, you've been trying to like incorporate like lights and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And stuff like this that. This one would be cool for the greenhouse. We, we found, we, His face um, kind of looks like a beehive. We, we and there's the Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, that's the one. That's Is it. this Jake your biggest seller now? He's a seller. I think I think because yeah, because the movie you know, definitely helped it. That got that clown. That is sick. You know, when I think of uh, silicone masks, mm -hmm. okay, you know, I think of like all of these like deformed 
people because in a haunted house a lot of people don't have like a costume department and stuff so whenever you like put them in a jumpsuit yeah. like a michael myers yeah. jumpsuit you have a lot of masks that could just go with a jumpsuit right you know th right. does that ever come into your thinking when you're yeah, like some, the kinds some, of costumes like people the, can we, like, we, we're always aware of the fact that sometimes like that like some masks um sell well because they're expensive but they're easy to costume like so, like a zombie is easy to costume. Yeah. Right? Like, a lot of things like you can have a really cool mask, but you don't have to worry about spending like, a brick in the bank on a costume. It's or like, like really a Frankenstein cool. character makes some like undersized clothing. And you kind yeah. of like, do that. This is um. Now I noticed too that you're making a lot more masks for women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this uh, must be a new line here. So that's part of the same same idea that the mushroom zombies, and we did that one's brand new today. And the funny thing about this one is to continue this idea of the the mushroom zombie is this mask is actually just a regular zombie. And we made these add-ons, so so this one actually is now in the, this family because of the the add-ons, all the mushroom add-ons. And then, what percent? How many masks did you bring here? And then, how many do you normally bring at say uh, Transworld? So there's a little over 400 here. Transworld's getting closer to a thousand. You bring a thousand masks. So you're talking about it's like a million dollars of masks. Yeah. And how do you get them there? In a truck. A truck? <laughs> yeah. Do you drive them yourself or no, you ship them? I, no, we hire we hire freighting companies. So yeah. It, it takes it takes a whole semi out to take our stuff there. Man, these are so cool, George. Thank you. On a daily basis, I guess you're never shocked if a celebrity calls you or a movie studio it's always or fun. it's but, always fun. Yeah, but, but but no. Like now it's now it's getting a little bit more routine, I guess. I, I know. But but there's always that moment where you're like, wait, what are we doing? <laughs> so um, How long does it take to make one mask? I'm talking about like, say like have, you've already sculpted it, and you want to make one. Right. So if it's sculpted, molded. You mean already, right? So it's, it's already start, molded. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, one day in mold prep and casting, <laughs> two days in, in yeah. patch, one day in paint. You, you could literally, <laughs> if you had to, you could probably get a mask done in about three days. Three days. Yeah. If you really had to, you probably could even go with it. Uh, Riley. It's like, uh, what's her name? Joan Rivers? No, yeah. it's like that one girl who did all the. It's a mix of, it's a mix of a Remember, bunch You know of that people. lady that did all the, the yeah. plastic surgery? Yeah. And, and, uh, and also a little bit of uh, Pete Burns from Dead or Alive. Well, George, uh, I also noticed you got this new line of sliced in half clowns. We had to do the chainsaw clowns. You know, like, like every, every, every haunt had, Universal had them, you know, the chainsaw brigade and stuff like that. And so. We thought, well, what did you do any uh, at half masks? Uh, have we done this? Ha not yet. No, those those are brand new. We did them last year. We thought it'd be kind of funny to just show the chainsaw clown having this hat. I really like the the masks, like where they're dolls. Oh, we have some more dolls. Uh, this I, one's a doll. I, I have, I have, yeah, he's good. I have two new doll characters. One we just we just cast the first ones this week, so I didn't, he didn't make it here. But it's a, it's a half mask. He's a cracked, aggressive male doll called Tantrum. And where are you guys based out of? We are based out of San Dimas, which is, so we're in Pasadena right now. San Dimas is about 15 miles east of here. And how many square feet is this shop of yours? The shop is about 12,000 square feet. Have you outgrown it? Have you, are you thinking about moving? Possibly. Yeah. Possibly? Yeah. So this is like half we, we've, the we've been looking at a couple spots, but we don't know for sure yet. We, we, there's also ways to make what we're doing work. So, hey, uh, two more questions. Sure. Like, uh, what is the warranty on your masks? Uh, if you take care of it, I'll take care of you. There, there's no real warranty on the mask, um, but I haven't had any issues. No issues at all? No. I mean, for, for the most part, everyone understands their responsibility. And, uh, if, there, if there's something that's a fa factory defect, I'm going to take it back and fix so it for you. So, let me ask you this question, because this is, like, really important for silicone masks, sure. right? What is, from a mortal mask's mm -hmm. perspective, yeah. the proper way to put the mask on, uh -huh. okay, and then what to do after you've taken it off and used it, mm -hmm. and then how should you store it? Okay, so, well, so putting the mask on is, well, I mean, I, it's easier to show you, so I have a video, right? So if you go to my, the FAQ section of my website, I have a video illustrating how to put a mask on properly, okay. how to take it off. As far as care for the mask, the, the good thing about silicone masks is they're really not that hard to take care of if you don't, like, mistreat them. So as far as just general upkeep, um, a baby wipe, Alcohol, like 99% alcohol is, is good, or 90% or, or higher. Has Spray high. Lysol inside of them? I mean, you can, but I think it lingers a little bit. Uh, I think something like um, P3 
pure isopropyl alcohol. It's, it's going to mm -hmm. kill bacteria and it's going to evaporate. So. But um, how do you keep your mask from, like, say, falling apart? Like, if a haunt doesn't have, say, air conditioning, sure, whatever, what, what should they do to keep their mask, like, put in... The mask, put the mask... In. We, we generally provide the mask with, in a plastic bag, so I, I recommend that. It keeps the dust and dirt off of them. Like, if you don't, don't put on a head form, which, by the way, is not necessary. Like, you don't have to have the mask on the head form. The good thing about silica masks is they don't really take misshape off of the form. Um, you just don't want to put like heavy things on them, you know, you know, creasing them and things like that. But you can just take a mask off, lay it flat in a bag, and put it on a shelf, and you're good. And that's that's what you recommend. Yeah, because that's all you really need to do. Like, but is a head form a suggestion? Uh, yeah, um, if you want to display them, sure. Yeah, it, it's it, you know, like I think for they're people, cool to display. They're cool to display, and I, I think also like for anybody who, if they're part of your business, it's part of your inventory. So if you're a haunt, right, that's part of your inventory. So the best way to see every year, you know. If they're all if they're all in head forms, you're gonna know. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. That might need some touch up. That you know, and you don't. You don't there's no surprises, <laughs> so because they're always out like that. If you're pulling them out of bags later, yeah, okay. If you, if you don't know how the masks look, you might be surprised if you didn't pull out early enough to look at it and see see if it you know, needs any touch up work. I got a question. Ah, oh, Riley has a question. Do you know anyone with more of your mask than this guy? <laughs> Universal Studios, but, but, but you're, you're coming close. <laughs> you're in second place <laughs> for Universal, I feel. Close. <laughs> I know it is kind of crazy, but I have to say that I use them. Um, and we have masks from other companies sure. too, but like um, we use them for promotional videos. Yeah, we shoot great, videos man. and we also shoot CGI effects. Like, yeah. you know, you've seen the darkness, yeah, lots of CGI effects. So I, I, that's, that's the thing. You can... I, I want you guys to be creative. I want you to have fun with them. You, know, you don't have to use them by in any traditional sense. So if you're figuring out new and cool things to do with them, like shooting shooting promotional videos or shooting CG things with them, that's why I made them. I made them for you guys to figure out what to do with them. Have fun. Like This is the part we get to have fun with, and then once they're in your hands, you get to have fun with it. And then there's Winnie the Pooh. There's Winnie. And dude, I cannot believe you made these. I was just, I, this rivals the hamburger. <laughs> really? It really does rival the hamburger. Now and again, like we, so we, we, our idea is borderline on like silly, to let, you know. But there's always a conversation about it. Like, 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 you know, like even when we did these, there was a conversation about like, like what scared us when we were kids, right? And we were talking about Chuck E. Cheese and uh, mascot costumes and like when you were a kid there was a 50 50 chance the easter bunny yeah you'd have a meltdown if you went to the easter bunny you right? need to make an easter bunny yeah, I know. then we talked about a rabbit we're trying to figure the ears out right now but that's what these guys were born out of we went well why don't we make these creepy silicone like living living uh mascot characters what is your favorite mask of all the ones that are here do you have oh, one god it changes all the time um i i'm let's see there's a couple masks that are here right now that I, that I really like this season. Uh, one of them is this one, Mothman. Just because it was a neat design and the eyes light up, it's really cool too. He is cool. Yeah, and then this one, Slayer. I, I, I don't know why I really like this mask, but I, I love it. It's one of my favorite masks. So, so let me ask you this, George. Mm -hmm. What is a mask that you made when you saw it? Mm -hmm. You go, no one's gonna want that. Okay, but it ended up being like a huge seller. And you're like, oh, I missed that one. Because sometimes you make a mask and you just say to yourself, oh, I don't know if this one will sell. Yeah, but those are the ones that you like the most. So like, so like, we used to call it like, like um, three for one. So it's like you make, you make three for them, one for you. And three for them means you make the given. They're going to want a zombie. They're going to want a, you know, a, uh, a, a, um, you know, a vampire, they're gonna want a Frankenstein, something like that. So you make the three for them and you make, the, you roll the dice on the third one because you don't know if anybody's gonna wanna see that, right? But you wanna see it. And we've done that with a couple of masks. The rhino mask was one of them. Like, we're like, well, who the hell's gonna want, like, what, why would you want a rhino mask? But we just wanna see if we could do it. Um, a good example, we made a, we made a great white shark mask. Oh, I have it. Yeah. It's, it's, Dude, it's, you know what? We made a video out of that. It's, we it's, did a video like uh, just for like, say, for example, it rains mm -hmm. and it's a Saturday yeah. and we're going to be open. Yeah. So we made a video with a shark, uh -huh. your open rain or shine. Yeah. And it's like, you know, yeah. splashing yeah. water all over them. That's what I'm saying. So, so, and, and, <laughs> and we put them in a suit. And we needed like it was like a challenge because we want we couldn't figure out how to make that work. Like, what? How are you going to put a human head in the shark and what's that going to be? So. 
I mean, why would anybody want a shark mask? But we needed, like, we needed to get it out. We needed to see it. And then did done. you see James Gunn's uh, Suicide yeah, Squad? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was King Shark. Yeah, yeah. So King and, shark. And people have done cosplays with that mask as King Shark and the big, made it big and we're like, that's why we made a shark, you know? So I think, I think there's times that we, we, like the little kidness comes out where it's like, it's no longer about the business. It's like, you know, I, I have no idea if this is going to sell. There's nothing, nothing's saying that there's a need for this, but I need to see it made. You know? Well, thanks a lot, George. You're welcome. And how do they find you on the internet? Um, well, uh, our, our website's www.immortalmasks.com and then Immortal Masks on you know, TikTok, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. yeah, and then we will see you, I guess, uh, at Transworld 2024. Are you happy that it's going back to March? Yeah. 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 Do you think that's the right time for it? I think so. I, I, I think I think I was able to do February, but it was a, it was a bit more rushed to the end than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. It's nice to have that one little extra. Was the show good for you this year? It's excellent for us. Yeah. Every year has been better than last year. Like that's no joke. Every year we've done better than the year before. Well, thanks a lot, George. Thanks. And uh, you know, I'm uh, glad you made it out here. Larry. It's an unbelievable. Um, you know, journey. It's like you're the, uh, yes. you've you've become the uh, Steve Jobs of of <laughs> masks. masks. You know, started off in your garage. Maybe one day, they'll uh, you know make it a you know a national memorial. You know, well, here's uh, the garage. Well, have a movie. Who'll play a movie? <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, George. All right. You take care. Thanks, sir.